Hello and welcome to Code Sketched. In the earlier videos about the React series, we have looked into hooks that deal with state, context, effects, and the use memo hook too. Which means we should now have a clear understanding of the React basics. So let's dig deeper into state management today and specifically into what Redux solves for us. But before doing that, let's ask ourselves an important question. Why do we need state management in React at all? We saw that whenever we need to re-render a component based on some data, we put it into the component's state. But, in all those use cases, the data was supposed to be localized to a single component. But what if that data needs to be shared across two or more components? What would we do? One solution is that we can move the state up to a parent component and pass it down as props to the two children. That way, when the state in the parent changes, it re-renders and passes the latest state to the children which can be rendered by them. But, what if the modification of the state needs to be triggered from the children as well? In that case, we can also pass the setState function to the child components so that they can trigger it when required. It is getting fairly complicated at this point of time, but it gets even more complicated if we need similar functionality over multiple levels of child components. For instance, what if the state is required to be used at certain components like components B and F here and needs to be updated from others like C and E by calling APIs similar to setState? Getting out of hand now, correct? That is the perfect setup for the introduction of a state management library. Basically, we are looking to solve these three problems. Firstly, how to store the state in a central location so that it acts as a single source of truth. Secondly, how do we make that latest state available inside of all the components that need it? Thirdly, how do we trigger updates to the state from any component downstream? In this first video, we will look into how the core Redux library solves these three problems. In the next video, we will get hands-on with React Toolkit to see how to make it all happen. Subscribe if you want to get notified when that video drops. Let's begin. Let's see how Redux solves the first problem, storing the state in a single source of truth. Redux uses something called a store to save the state of the entire application. This is how the code looks like. This store is just a JavaScript object that is passed to a provider which is a higher order component that the Redux library exports. The entire app is rendered inside the provider component. That way, it has access to the entire state of the application in the form of the store. Let us now see how this store can be accessed from within the app. Now that we have the whole state in the form of the store, we can use a hook to access it. The Redux library provides us the use selector hook for this purpose. We can pass a selector function to it like so. Redux then gets the appropriate value from the store and also makes sure that whenever the value from the store changes, this component will be re-rendered with the latest value. Let's understand this in detail. Let us say that the counter component is several layers deep inside the app component. And it has a selector to access the value of the count from the store like so. When this code runs during the first render, the value from store.counter is fetched. After that, Redux subscribes to the updates on the store. And whenever an update to the value happens, it triggers a re-render on the counter component. Thus, the count variable gets the latest value of counter.value. But, let us say if another key in the store, say value2 is updated. That will not trigger anything, because the selector function defined in the counter is not interested in value2. That is why the selector needs to be as fine-grained as possible to take advantage of this and avoid unnecessary re-renders when unrelated state in the store changes. Now let us see how we can trigger updates on the values in the store. That can be done with the help of another hook called useDispatch. Let us say we have an updater component that is supposed to update the count in the store. We utilize the useDispatch hook to get hold of the dispatch function. We then call this dispatch function with a special object that has a type and a payload property. The type specifies what kind of action we want to execute and the payload is the data supplied to execute that action. This dispatched action goes to the store and then the store updates the value of the state based on the action that is supposed to be performed. At the end of all this, we get the latest value of the state reflecting in the store. I know all that might be a lot to take in, so let's summarize it here. We create an initial value of the state and pass it as stored to the provider which acts as a single source of truth. Let us assume that it looks like this in the beginning. The values from the store can be read with the help of the use selector hook inside any component. And Redux will make sure to re-render that component whenever any value that the component is looking for changes in the store state. Updates to the store can be dispatched with the help of the use dispatch hook inside any component. 
An action that contains a type and a payload is dispatched to the store. The store is supposed to have a reducer function, which takes the current state and this action as the inputs and spits out a new state. It is usually a switch case on the action and whatever is returned from this function then becomes the new state. Here's a summarized view of all that. We have a store that is accessed by the component via selectors. The component dispatches actions which are intercepted by a reducer function that processes the actions and generates the new state in the store. And that's all there is to the theory part of it. We will look into how this can be practically implemented using Redux Toolkit in the next video. See you in the next one.